But a few things I covered, and you, you probably noticed, I try to cover things two weeks in a row for, because I know um, not everybody's here every week. So I did talk about this last week, um, but going back to something that happened in early October, or I'm sorry, earlier um, this fall, a federal judge had ruled that um, Governor Wolf's orders to shut down businesses and limit gatherings uh, towards the beginning of the pandemic were unconstitutional. Governor Wolf, not surprisingly, the administration appealed that. And on October 1st, the Third Circuit Court of Appeals stayed portions of that judge's rulings, which um, for the moment at least allows um, Governor Wolf to continue restricting public gatherings. So stay tuned on this. There's going to be more. And I think this becomes a bigger deal mainly if we have to go back into shutdown mode, which some people think we might have to in the fall. Um, but you also probably have seen, so for example, if any of you, you were watching the um, Eagle Steelers game this weekend, things have changed with regard to public gatherings. You saw there were some people in the stadium, right? Um, so it's not quite as clear of a um, numbers game anymore with regard to how many people you can have at a gathering. There's a lot of percentages. A restaurant can be this percent full, an outdoor sports venue can be this percent full. Um, interestingly, in Philadelphia, I don't think we're going to get fans still because of um, Mayor Kenny, but that's a different story. Um, but for now, at least, we can still have those limitations. And again, like I said, this gets more interesting only if we have to go into any sort of shutdown mode again, which hopefully we won't. Um, and I talked about this last week again, but yeah, the lawsuits are here. So um, one of the international uh, employment law firm Blitler is tracking employment related lawsuits around the country. Um, and so far we have over a, well over 800. And again, keep in mind, this is just lawsuits. This is not filings with the, the government, state or, or, or local or federal. This is not the government itself doing investigations. This is just a lawsuit. Um, and so I know it doesn't sound like a lot, um, but it is because more are coming. Um, and what we're finding among our members, I've already talked to several members who have gotten demand letters, mostly from folks who have been laid off during this time and they're challenging the layoff for various reasons. Um, usually a lawsuit's not going to start as a lawsuit, it's going to start with a demand letter, okay? A letter's going to come from an attorney saying, you've wronged this former employee for these reasons and this is what we want to settle the case. And it may be very tempting when you read that letter to say, eh, I don't, you know, this has zero merit to it. I'm going to toss this aside. I'm not even going to pay any attention to it. Please don't. Um, there is a significant psychological component that goes into these lawsuits. Um, if the person feels that they're being ignored, they're not just going to go away. Um, in fact, it might just make things worse. On top of it, if they've already got an attorney involved, that attorney has already invested time and money. They're not likely to walk away because they want to see something. They want to see something come to fruition so they can get paid. Um, first thing you do when you get the letter, Decide uh, who within your organization needs to know about the demand letter. It's not everybody. Um, it's only the people at the highest levels who need to make decisions about how to respond. Don't inform them in writing, at least not at first. This is a telephone call, an in-person conversation, a Zoom conversation. Um, and that goes to the idea that you don't wanna document um, everything, even though it's important to document a lot and that's an HR mantra, document, 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 right? There are times when you wanna be very, very thoughtful about how you document. Um, so it's, at least at first, don't send up an email blast to everybody in the company that, hey, I think we're getting sued. Um, call your insurance broker. It's possible you might have uh, Employment Practices Liability Insurance, EPLI, which would cover something like this. Maybe, maybe not. Better to know early though, and better to put your carrier on notice. And of course, the employment attorney is always gonna tell you, talk to an experienced employment attorney. Um, talk to somebody who's handled these matters before. You know, the, the, the demand letter thing is, is pretty routine for someone who's um, handled these cases, someone like me who's handled these cases for years. Um, so talk to an employment attorney. If you're an MEA member, this is something we can help you with, so please reach out to us. So you may have heard this sort of new term that's bouncing around, um, the twindemic. These are the concerns that um, as the weather gets colder um, in parts of the country, including the Northeast, Flu season obviously is upon us, um, that in addition to having our COVID issues, we're gonna have our flu issues and that's gonna create maybe twice the problem um, and going to cause additional issues um, with regard to health, with regard to safety and, and the fear of course, is this gonna cause some sort of shutdown again. We don't have a vaccine for COVID-19 yet, um, but we do have a vaccine for the flu. Um, 
PSA. I went out yesterday, got my, my flu vaccine. It is super, super easy. Um, if you're able to do it, uh, go to your pharmacy that you normally use. They already have all your insurance information. It took me maybe 20 minutes round trip um, to, to leave my house and come back. So I, I highly recommend. Um, but we've talked before in the past about what do you as an employer do um, around this issue? Because the flu vaccine is available, are you going to require your employees to get it? Well, you probably can if you have um, a good reason, a good legitimate business reason for health and safety. Um, and that would come, you know, if you are in person, first of all, definitely if you deal with the public. Clearly, if you're in healthcare, this has been around in healthcare forever. Um, but if all of your employees are remote, I don't know that you have a really good health and safety reason. Um, but you need to think about how you're going to do it. Are you really going to make it um, mandatory, which means if people refuse to get flu shots, are you prepared to fire them? And also keep in mind that you do have ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, and Title VII religious accommodation issues. Um, so people might not be able to get the flu shot for uh, health reasons, or they might have an objection for um, valid religious reasons. So keep that in mind as well. Um, you, you think about your carrot and your stick approach to flu shots, right? Um, and sometimes the carrot is better. Um, I'll give you paid time off to go get your flu shot, um, encourage people to do it, give them all the good reasons to do it, the good health and safety information. And then this is really a good time to think about or maybe rethink about how you're handling sick employees, okay? Because we are getting into a time um, with regard to you know, people are going to be having symptoms that are COVID-like symptoms, but they may not be COVID at all. We, some folks have already dealt with this in the spring and the summer, right? If you have allergies, um, you have exhibited COVID symptoms, right, at some point. And so the way we have handled it at the MEA, we have a screening document um, where everybody gets asked, do you have um, these symptoms that you can be sure are not caused by something else, a new onset of symptoms, right? Because I, I know one employee in particular at MEA was telling me, well, yes, I have these symptoms, but I always have these symptoms at this time of year because I'm allergic to X, Y, and Z. So think about your screening documents. Um, think about how you're going to deal with people who are going to exhibit symptoms that may be COVID, maybe not. Um, think about the morale issues. Um, you have an employee who comes into work one day, they're coughing, they're sneezing, they maybe have a temperature, they go out, but they're back in a few days. That's not the quarantine period. Um, people kind of looking at them side eyes. So how are you going to deal with that? Maybe telemedicine is part of the answer. If you have the ability, if you have that on your as part of your benefits, maybe if you don't, it's something you look into. I think a lot of employers have found telemedicine to be very valuable through the pandemic. Um, and again, reevaluate or evaluate your screening. Are your employees accurately reporting some symptoms? Do you need to adjust your screening process to make sure you're catching people and be thoughtful about it? Um, You've heard me say this before. If you haven't, spend some time on the CDC's website, five or 10 minutes a week. It's extremely valuable. Um, they have a lot of good information there and can help you think about that. They also have some great posters um, that if you're physically in the workplace, you might want to think about um, putting up around your workplace. All right, guys, um, we keep hearing through the pandemic how much you enjoy, for those of you who are members, how much you're enjoying your membership. I um, want to just remind you of our program if you refer someone who is not a member and they become a member, you get 20% off your dues to your company, you get a $100 gift card for yourself. So great deal. Um, so please spread the word. Um, we love hearing about how valuable you find your MEA membership. Um, and we would love it even more if you would get your friends to join as well. All right. So again, keep in mind, we're on, keep at the website. We've been updating um, the Coronavirus Resource Center. We just uh, updated the FAQs in the last couple of weeks. Um, and for members, reach out to the hotline. Jane is always there and ready to take your call. Amy, thank you very much. Uh, and um, again, when you receive the materials, either today or tomorrow, there will be a link to the survey about year-end um, um, you know, year holiday parties, what we're all doing. So please fill that out and we'll talk about that next week. So have a great week, everybody. Thanks.